Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy. For Nerds by Nerds, I am with a couple of nerds. Nathan Nerdark. Nerdark is Ted. And today, Nerdarchy asks, how much would you pay to play Dungeons and Dragons? Hey guys, jump down in the description below where you can find Nerdarchy, the newsletter, gain weekly tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Alright, so we're talking pay to play today. Right, so what exactly is that? That's, you know... Uh, I see I see pay, uh, posts on it, videos on it, you know, there, and that is the concept that players are paying their dungeon master, new dungeon master for them. All right. So now, are we talking uh, specifically like I pay you, I run a game online, or are we are we including this as like I go to a game shop? And any I... any way, any which way you want to okay. talk about All it. All right. So let, let's start off right. So. So there's so I've you know uh, I recently watched uh, re by recent I mean within the last couple of months watched uh, Matt Click do a thing on it uh, Matt Click from A Fistful of Dice Absolute Tabletop over in, in their Facebook group he did like a live a uh, Facebook live thing uh, Andrew Armstrong of Dawnforge Cast is a professional dungeon master he's done several uh, videos live streams all kinds of stuff on it mm -hmm. uh, he's also was included in an actual article about it about him and another one. Recently, Facebook posts, I've seen people talking about it. And, and I just find it a really fascinating and interesting topic. And, and actually, um, Matt Click had brought up, you know, I heard, I, you know, I heard that the Nerdarchy guys were gonna, wanted to go run games for money, which is only partially true. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm considering doing it. And, we, you know, we all have different, <laughs> we have different opinions on it. So I figured we'd talk about it and, and kind of hash it out as well. So, to me, if you've got... You know, a group, and everybody wants to sit and play D and D. It's it's a favorite pastime of mine. I don't see a reason to get into it. But if you're someone that doesn't have access to to a group, you can't get a game, and D and D is important to you as it is to me. I don't see a problem with saying, okay, well, I'll put up a little bit of money to actually get into a game or get into a regular game. Or if I was given the option, oh, would you? Would you pay to get into a celebrity game or to play with someone that has, you know, uh, you know a loftier position? Like, would I would I pay pay to play with Vin Diesel, um, you know, Matt Mercer, you know, any Jim of that? Butcher. Count? Absolutely, I mean, <laughs> I'd pay more for Jim Butcher just because I'm, you know, huge. So fan. what you're saying is you have a price? Yes. To, to pl playing a game with Dungeon Master, you've actually been thinking about doing this. Let, let's hear your uh, viewpoint. Okay, well, I have been considering it, uh, kind of leveraging my time against what's available to me, and I can't really, I don't, I'm not gaining any time, so I've got to decide on whether or not I, I can't do things for free, really, that much. So I have to decide on, well, do I offer to play with people, or do I say, you know, I can't. So for me, I was like, well, if I was paid to play, I can actually do that while... I've got all this other stuff going on, so that's what I, that's what my kind of like my direction behind offering the pay to play. Uh, so I'd obviously like play. you're not against it. I'd, <laughs> yeah, I'm not against it. I'd like to I'd like to to play with more people, but I do not have the time without sacrificing the ability to feed my family. So there's like this kind of disconnect between what I would like to do and what I'm able to do. So for me, it's more about I need to either work a job or do something that also produces money. So in this case, if I could do what I'd like to do, as well as get paid money, that's way that's way better than than what I would consider just working some just random job for. It. Now, what about you? I want to touch on a couple things that get overlooked in this conversation every time. Personally, I don't give an F what other people do, right? <laughs> if you want to pay someone to be your DM, pay them. If you want to charge people to play in your games, charge them. I don't really care. Now, now I have a couple of things on this, really. One of the things is people really confuse paying a dungeon master to run a game with you with paying a specific person to be your dungeon master. They are not the same. They are not even equal. And most of the people that are really against this, this whole concept are hypocrites, to be honest with you. Because, you know, they'll say things like, you're not Matt Mercer, you're not Chris Perkins, you're not so and so. So what that tells me is you've got a price. There's a DM you will pay to be in their game, right? So you kind of need to shut up and mind your own business if this is a big thing for you because you're saying you have a you, you have a price, right? There's people you would pay to be in their game. You just want to pay for the people you've seen. Right, <laughs> right. So you're not actually against it. You, you, know, you seem a little confused to me. So, so there's that aspect, right? 
And then there, there, so you have like Dawn Forge cast, Andrew Armstrong. Whether you think he's a great DM or not, it doesn't matter because there are people that are and they're paying a lot of money to play in his games, right? They're not playing for a, they're not paying for a dungeon master. They're paying for Andrew Armstrong of Dawn, Dawn, Dawn Forged Cast, right? They're not going to pay for Ted or Nate, probably, but they'll pay for Andrew. Maybe they will. I don't know. <laughs> but they want that specific dungeon master. There's a huge difference be between paying for a specific dungeon master that you want to be in their game and paying a dungeon master. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm actually not against either. I really don't care. Would I charge th for people to be in games with me? No, because I think it's a horrible business model. See, I come from um, the fitness industry years ago. I know you're looking at this physique and you're like, we believe you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Long I, ago. Yeah, yeah. No, I used to work in that industry as a personal trainer, right? And you can, there, you got a couple options, right? You can charge more for your sessions. You can do small group training. But th that's it. Like, that's all you can do. Like, you've got, I've got 24 hours in a day. I can dedicate X amount to working. So you're limited on how much money you can make by that. That's why I think actually pay to play dungeon mastering is a horrible business model, right? If you enjoy dungeon master and you want to get paid for it, that's fine. But all you're creating is you're creating a job for yourself. And, you know, the only way to make more at your job, right, is to get raises. Well, in this case, the only way to get raises is by raising your rates. But eventually, you're you're going to hit a point where people aren't going to pay anymore, right. mm -hmm. uh, unless maybe you are Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know. And then you'll have to work maybe a couple hours dungeon mastering, right? At, right. A, high, at a high rate, right? It's a like a million, it's a million dollar table. A Vin Diesel rate, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like that. That's my kind of thing. I think people are really confused when when they say paying to play Dungeons and Dragons, right? And then they bring up all these other ways that you can play Dungeons and Dragons for free. And you're right because. Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, the One Shot Group and Facebook, you know, your local game stores. These are all places you can go and find free games. Heck, even the, even the company The Nag gets games together going. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Absolute Tabletop, uh, they have their own group. There's lots of games going on there. So I don't, I don't think it's really about paying to have a Dungeon Master run a game for you. Generally, it's more about paying a specific person and i think you see more of that like nate could do it and it would be a lot easier for him than other people because they've seen him run games he does things on nerdarchy and and like nerdarchy and dawnforge cast and and you know the guys from absolute tabletop or anybody like that where where you have a sphere of influence you could go out there and do it and what we're actually charging for not is not to play dungeons and dragons the, these people they're willing to pay money because they want to play with those specific people not because they want to play Dungeons and Dragons. Right. There's a huge difference. And, you know, in our specific instance, or Andrew Armstrong's, or, you know, some of these other uh, Dungeon Masters for Hire, the the problem is time, right? Like, we couldn't, we literally couldn't play with everyone for free, even if we wanted to, right? Even if we opened up all of our time, there's so many people that would be willing to play in that game yes. that, you know, it, it, we're never going to be able to fulfill that. Oh, so, yeah. Well, in that in that regard, I want to play Dungeons and Dragons ten hours a day, but I have five children. I have a wife. They want to see me. I have to sleep. I have to actually make money, and I have to do stuff for Nerd Dark. Like we're here right now. We're not playing D and D. We're shooting a video. We're shooting videos all day. So all that stuff takes away time. So at the end of the day, it's like, well, I also eat. So there's all these things. That and subtract. shower, and yeah, shower. And, yeah, and shower. So there's all these things that get subtracted from the day. I think you're all familiar with it. So at the end of the day, you go, all right, I'd also like to play 10 hours of Dungeons & Dragons. Well, it's the next day, and it all starts over again. So I have to cut something out to put dun more Dungeons & Dragons in. Right. In your case, you're like, well, I work this part-time job in yeah. addition to being a full-time dad. You know, so what could I cut out? Well, if I got more money, I could cut out the part-time job. Exactly. And then I could, you know, run games. Now, honestly, I would not want to play in games and run games 10 hours a day every day. I would, I, I, I don't want to do anything that often. I would hate it, whatever it was. <laughs> maybe sleep. I could maybe do sleep 10 hours a day every day. And I'd be all right with it. But, you know, but, you know like a month, in a month in, I'm going to wake up after five hours and be like, I cannot sleep another minute, man. <laughs> so, so, so there's that. And so really, personally, what other people do, I generally don't care. As long as they're not hurting anybody, no one's getting hurt. There's no harm done, no, no harm, no foul, no worries. 
But I find the, the, the most annoying thing about this argument I see a lot of times is I find that a lot of people are just hypocrites, you know, because they're just not willing to pay for certain people. But they do have, like, they do have a price. Everyone's got a price. And, and it's like, oh, Mike Morales is running a game? Oh, yeah, I'll plop down 50 bucks for that or, <laughs> or whatever. Or, so you, yeah, so that means they pay. Right, play or or you know, or maybe it's a charity game. Oh, I would pay to be in a charity game. Well, you're still paying, right? Because you could literally play Dungeons and Dragons for free and just give to the charity out of the goodness of your heart. Exactly. If it's true charity, <laughs> you just hand over the money. <laughs> <laughs> like so, that's what I mean. There's like people have a price. There's always a price for not everyone. I mean, granted, there's some people that are gonna be like, no matter what, I would never pay. Whoever it is, right, right, and, and it's fine and. There's nothing wrong with that. Just like I don't see anything wrong with people that are willing to pay for a service and others that are willing to fulfill it. You know, it comes back to, you know, supply and demand. Like if it was really an issue, we wouldn't we wouldn't have to talk about it or we wouldn't be talking about it because it wouldn't exist, right? No one would pay for it if it didn't have any value. Yeah, talking about the supply and demand, I also see a lot of gripes about stores offering, you know, oh, the D&D &D book set plus this um, extra, basically like playing D&D, &D. you kind of basically get an intro to D&D, &D, you get the books, and you pay a certain fee. And it's kind of like a combo, it's for, I think it's for younger people as well, so it's a combo of like, you know, hanging out, babysitting, watching the kids, as well as teaching them D&D, &D, as well as supplying them with the books, and it costs a certain amount, obviously, for the person's time. Well, that person's probably either a uh, someone volunteering or a store, cl store clerk or something like that. They have a wage, they're getting paid. Oh, so. no, 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 the, there's the other end, dude, this is like, the, like, if you're going to cons, like, a lot of these cons, you have to pay with tokens to be in the games, right? Well, those GMs are volunteers, and they don't even get paid, and then the tokens, like, will go to the, to the, to the convention itself, so the convention is getting paid for you, for that dungeon master to run a game for you, so you like if you've ever played in a con game like the bigger cons, you've played you've paid for your dungeon master. Right. You know he just doesn't get anything out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the prestige of playing at a con or something. Yeah, at, like that. At, at the local gaming shops, I know that there oh. are there are always things where there is the the pay to play, and part of that is okay. Well, the the person running might be an employee, or it might be okay. Well, I volunteer my time and I get a cut. Because that's my part-time job. Like, that's the way they're looking at it. But I know a lot of these places, you know, you'll get pizza, you'll get drinks. You get the space in the shop to actually do it. Because not everybody has access to appropriate amount of space to actually have stuff. Some gaming shops, they're going to provide, you know, minis and dice and things that not everybody's going to have access to. So that pay-to-play. In, in those uh, situations, you wind up with a better gaming experience than you might have because of the locale. There's extras. And going back to the thing with the, the training and, and stuff like that, the intro to D&D &D and paying for that. Well, there's the gripe is, I was getting back to the gripe about it. Uh, online I see people complaining that there's an issue with with that. Like, oh, well, you know, I'd never pay for D&D &D, or I think that's a ripoff because they're paying like this much for the books and then this extra for for the, the, the training basically the, the the tutorial for the and I'm like well if you're gonna offer to do it or say you would do it or say you would do it for free well are you in that area and like how many games are you gonna run <laughs> until that that need is satisfied because if you can't absorb all of that need then somebody who's willing to do it for some amount of money is going to have to take over for that because otherwise there's going to be D&D players who would like to play but they have no access to the people who supposedly are just going to do it for free but where are they so if you're somewhere on the internet saying well you you know you shouldn't pay for this because you know rather than going to a D&D um, like a comic book shop or something like that that's going to have that gaming store uh, and paying a fee to to learn D&D I'll teach you except you where are you like that's my that's my issue with the, the people that are all gripey about it. And it's like, well, you know, then volunteer online all the time and see how that goes for you. Yeah, I mean, there there are resources, there's videos and stuff like that. But and again, you could use that same argument: Are you doing those tutorials for those players so they can come check them out? Are they finding them? That, that then that goes to the argument of the marketing of information on the internet rather than using fifty hours of your month to find all the information on the internet. So, I mean, we have tons of videos online for free, and you can come check them out. But 
if you need to find specific information, if you need to find specific rules, someone who you can just ask in person, who's also showing you how the, how the game runs, it's a completely different scenario. So that's a, that's a service basically that you're paying for. A human. <laughs> yeah, you're paying. You're paying for a human in your face, just rolling some funny shaped dice with you. I want to buy a human. <laughs> and you can Nerdarchy for a not small a, slice. Nerdarchy does not uh, condone human trafficking. <laughs> but playing a D and D for a small price, sure, I'd say yay. I'm a yay too. I don't care what other people do with their money. <laughs> Got no problems with it. So the question is, guys, what do you? How do you feel about? It? Have you ever paid to play? Uh, let us know in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. You can like us over on Facebook. You can hang out with us over on nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy. Four nerds by nerds, hang out with a couple of nerds. Nathan Nerdark. Nerdark is Ted. And today, Nerdarchy asks, how much would you pay to play Dungeons and Dragons? Hey guys, jump down in the description below where you can find Nerdarchy, the newsletter, Gain weekly tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Alright, so we're talking pay to play today. Right, so what exactly is that? That's, you know, uh, I see I see pay, uh, posts on it, videos on it, you know, and that is the concept that players are paying their dungeon master, new dungeon master for them. Alright, so now, are we talking uh, specifically like I pay you, I run a game, online or are we are we including this as like i go to a game shop and any I... any way any which way you want to okay. talk about all it. right so let, let's start off right so so there's cool about it about him and another one recently facebook posts i've seen them people talking about it and, and i just find it a really fascinating and interesting topic and and actually um matt click had brought up you know i heard you know i heard that the nerdarchy guys were going to wanted to go you know, run games for money which is only partially true <laughs> So yeah, I'm, it, I'm considering doing it. And, we, you know, we all have different, <laughs> we have different opinions on it. So I figured we'd talk about it. So I've, you know, uh, I recently watched, uh, re by recent, I mean within the last couple of months, watched uh, Matt Click do a thing on it. Uh, Matt Click from A Fistful of Dice, Absolute Tabletop, over in, in their Facebook great group. He did like a live, a uh, Facebook live thing. Uh, Andrew Armstrong of Dawnforge Cast is a professional dungeon master. He's done several uh, videos, live streams, all kinds of stuff on it. Uh, he's also was included in an actual article and, and right. kind of hash it out as well. So, to me, if you've got you know a group and everybody wants to sit and play D and D, it's it's a favorite pastime of mine. I don't see a reason to get into it. But if you're someone that doesn't have access to to a group, you can't get a game, and D and D is important to you as it is to me. I don't 